At one point, the subject of today's video was not only a five-star recruit, but a two-time national champion, a first-team All-American, an all-conference selection, a first-round pick, and a pro bowler. He pretty much did everything a football player could possibly dream of, but right when he was about to hit his peak, he suddenly fell off, quickly lost his superstar status, and now is not even playing football. In today's video, we're going to talk about a former five-star recruit, a former Alabama Crimson Tide fan favorite, and someone who had all the potential in the world, but ultimately had a quick decline. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, as nearly 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, and we can do better than that for the upcoming season. Also, don't forget to leave a like if you want to support the channel, turn on notifications so you never miss when I upload, and let me know what player or topic I could cover next. Now, let's get started. So you're probably wondering who the subject of today's video is, and it is none other than Ha Ha Clinton Dix. He is one of the more iconic and interesting names in college football over the last decade, but in order to understand what went wrong for him, we first need to go back in time. As you probably imagined, Ha Ha is not his actual name, as his real name is Hashan Treshawn Clinton Dix. Apparently one day he was crawling down the stairs as an infant, and he fell, and his grandma called him Ha Ha, and the nickname stuck with him throughout the rest of his life. It's not like it's annoying to him either, as apparently he loves it, and every coach and teammate of his has also loved it. It also helped get him noticed. He grew up in the small town of Eatonville, Florida, which has just over 2,000 residents and was located seven miles away from Orlando. Ha Ha always liked football, but he was more of a fair weather type of player. His family had to teach him a lot of discipline. He said, quote, when I was a kid, I remember I used to hide under the bed sometimes because I didn't want to go to practice. Even when I didn't want to go to practice, it could be pouring rain outside and I'd be like, yes, no practice today. And my mom would be there, and we were still going, and we'd have practice under the pavilion. My mom was always there. Even if she got off work late sometimes, I still went to practice. Whether it was 30 minutes, 45 minutes, or even an hour late, I was always going to practice, and my parents taught me that. I guess that paid off, as when he arrived at Edgewater High School, he had a lot of potential and began to play on the other side of the ball. He was a running back in his first two years of high school, before he made up his mind that he was going to play in the NFL one day. Because of that, he decided to transfer from Edgewater to Dr. Phillips High School, and he also became a safety. This would give him a better chance of making it to the league, and it definitely paid off. Given his physical traits and better coaching, Clinton Dix blossomed into a five-star recruit and was ranked amongst the top high school players in the country. He had offers from tons of schools, but Florida State, Alabama, Florida, and Michigan seemed to be the schools that stood out to him. He was taking every school seriously, but then in 2010, he told recruiting services that he wanted to leave the state of Florida, so all eyes turned to Alabama. After a spring visit to Tuscaloosa, he apparently fell in love with the campus, the coaches, and the culture, and Bama became the team to beat, and he'd eventually make that a reality as he would commit. But why Bama? Well, Coach Saban sold him. He said, quote, he's the head coach and he's gonna be coaching me. That's the first head coach I ever met who came down during my junior year and actually wanted to see me personally. He couldn't really talk to me, but I took that as a great thing. Saban made Haha -Ha feel at home and part of the family, and that was the most important thing to him, and that was the reason why he played. Haha -Ha said, quote, that's always been the number one thing for me. They were always at every game, every event supporting me. Even if my sister had to work an extra night to take the day off and be at my game, she'd be there. They were always just there 100%, motivating me, picking me up from practice, taking me to practice, and they are why I play. He was obviously a superstar in high school and became a five-star recruit because of it. But interestingly enough, he was not the only five-star recruit on the roster. They also had a running back by the name of D. Hart. He would not go on to have the same kind of career that Ha Ha would have, but at the time, he was a big deal. Both of them would eventually become a package deal as they committed to Alabama, and he said, quote, It's great to have someone you can trust and someone you can lean on when times get tough. So having D. Hart here with me is very good. Those two became a dynamic duo at Dr. Phillips as they went undefeated and went to the 6A state championship game where they eventually lost to Miami Central, who was led by Devontae Freeman. Clinton Dix was Mr. Versatility as he finished with 73 tackles, two interceptions, and five touchdowns on offense while also returning both kicks and punts. Because of that, his talent was recognized and he was invited to the Under Armour All-American game. He would go on to dominate at that event and many wondered if he could play right away at Alabama. He thought so. He said, quote, I do see myself getting on the field early. How I see it is, wherever I go and play, I'm going to play. I have an instinct going in and out playing people and just playing hard. So the depth chart, to me, is not really a factor. There was some traction that he could eventually flip, as he did want to visit both LSU and Florida, 
but he said he just wanted to use up his free visits and have a backup plan in case Bama went south. He was also a man of his words, and he said, quote, My best friend just committed to Alabama, so I'm very solid. My word is my bond, but I would like to have a backup just in case something goes wrong at Bama. This is a blessing to have five free visits, so I'm going to take advantage of it. He obviously did not end up flipping, and according to 24-7 Sports, he was a huge deal. He was a five-star recruit, the number two safety, the number two player in the state of Florida, and the seventh best player nationally in the class of 2011. He had the hype, a support system, and five stars to his name, so how would he end up doing at Bama? Haha would arrive on campus in 2011, and he was one of a few freshmen to see the field. He ended up appearing in nine games, finishing with 11 tackles and two pass deflections. Not out of this world stats, but he was a backup freshman. 2012 would end up being his breakout season, as he now became a starter and started to put up better numbers. This time he finished with 37 tackles, a forced fumble, 5 interceptions, and 3 pass deflections. He was one of the top players on the defense, and this helped Alabama get all the way to the national championship game, where they eventually beat Notre Dame 42-14. He would now get his second ring as they had beaten Notre Dame the year prior, and many believed he was going to be the superstar on defense for 2013. Haha would have a quick start to the 2013 season, but it would not come without a hiccup. On October 3rd, he was suspended indefinitely for a violation of team rules, but he was reinstated after two games. Despite that two-game distraction, Clinton Dix had an incredible season. He finished with 44 tackles, two interceptions, and three pass deflections, while helping Alabama get to the Sugar Bowl. This was the year where they infamously lost by the kick six to Auburn, so he missed out on a chance to win three national titles. Because of how good he played that year, he was named a first-team All-SEC selection and was named a consensus All-American. His stats weren't out of this world, but his physical traits and his starting experience led many to believe that he'd be one of the top safeties taken in the 2014 NFL Draft. He decided he was going to leave school early, and he never got a chance to finish his degree. Coach Saban made him promise that he would come back and get it later, but he knew that HaHa ha had immediate NFL potential. What's interesting though is Coach Saban said, quote, Ha Ha was a great, hardworking guy who did everything exactly like you wanted as a coach. He set a really good example for other players. I don't ever remember him being in my office for doing the wrong thing. This makes that two-game suspension look really weird. Either Saban is lying, or that two-game suspension had nothing to do with him getting in trouble. That, I don't really know. Please elaborate down in the comment section, as I have no idea. Scouts were drooling over his NFL potential, and many believed he was the perfect kind of safety who could guard up-and-coming tight ends. Both Eric Ebron and Jay Samaro took over college football that year, and because of that, safeties needed to be faster and more agile, and HaHa ha was seen as the perfect player for that. There was even a billboard in Orlando talking about how he was going to be a first-round pick, and this is exactly what would end up happening. He was the 21st overall selection in the 2014 draft by the Green Bay Packers. He would come in with immediate hype, and he started right from the get-go. As a rookie, he had a dominating season. He finished with 94 tackles, one sack, and one interception. Because of that, he was named to the all-rookie team, and he would continue to get better and better throughout his next few years. In 2015, he'd once again start all 16 games, where he finished with a career-high 100 tackles, three sacks, and this time two interceptions. 2016 would be the peak of his performance as he would start all 16 games, finishing with 80 tackles, half of a sack, 5 interceptions, and 7 pass deflections to go alongside a fumble. Because of that, he was a Pro Bowl selection, and he was now seen as one of the top up-and-coming safeties in the league. There were rumors that he was going to get a huge contract, but that would sort of be dependent on how he would do in 2017. Unfortunately, this is where his decline would start. In 2017, his stats would drop in pretty much every category, but he was still a decent starter. In 2018, he would only start seven games before he was eventually traded to the Washington Redskins. They exchanged him for a fourth round pick, and he'd go on to finish with 65 tackles with three pass deflections there. In 2019, he was once again on the move, as this time he signed with the Chicago Bears, and while he had good numbers, he was once again seen as inconsistent. In my eyes though, he was still a decent starter, and there was no reason for what happened next. He signed with the Cowboys, but was later released. He then signed with the Niners, but was released by them. He then went to the Raiders and the Broncos, both of which were practice squad stints, and we have seen nothing from him since 2019. He went from a player that started six straight seasons to not even recording any stats in the last three seasons. It's a pretty quick decline, but many Packers fans and scouts around the league saw this coming. 
One scout said, quote, he's unbelievably inconsistent. I know it's a simple quote, but that's exactly what happened to him. Around the time of his decline, he actually went back and got his degree from Alabama in criminal justice, and it seemed like his heart was set on being a role model for other people and getting a job in that industry. He became a voice to people back home in Orlando, and he said, quote, I just want to be a mentor, be able to give back, and show people that it's not a bad thing to be in criminal justice or to be a cop, if that's what you want to do. This seemed to be the path he was starting to head down, but to many outsiders, this was weird. After his Pro Bowl appearance, he was only 25 and should have been hitting his peak as an NFL safety, except he regressed to the point where the Packers decided to trade him, and then neither the Redskins or the Bears saw enough in him to sign him to more than a year. So what ultimately went wrong for HaHa? -Ha? Well, one Packers site has this theory. They said, quote, His work ethic and attention to detail suffered, and his quest to make big plays prevailed at the expense of doing his job. I think this is a pretty good way of summarizing it, as once he had his big years, and got some of his money, he didn't work as hard, and was just trying to make highlight level plays instead of doing the simple things. Also around the same time, he was probably having a change of heart, and felt he had maybe already done everything he could do in the football world. He pretty much achieved everything a player could ever want except a Super Bowl, and he may have gotten to a point where he didn't really care. He was a top 10 high school player, a 5 star recruit, an All-American, an All-Conference selection, a 2 time national champion, a first round pick, and a pro bowler. What more could you ask from a player? and I would definitely not label this guy as a bust. He did all of that and started six years in the NFL, but his quick decline makes for a very interesting story. From everything I've read, he is happy in the next stage of life, and it seems football is in the rearview mirror for him. I started watching college football around the time that he played at Bama, and he definitely has one of the most iconic names ever. To go along with that, he's one of the more accomplished Alabama players in recent memory, and I definitely wish him the best of luck in the next stage of life. But what do you think? If you're an Alabama or a Packers fan, what went wrong for Clinton Dix after the 2016 season? Who is another player I could take a look at in my next video? And what topic, situation, team, or bust should I take a look at next? Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace. Thank you.